Doctor, thanks for joining us today. We're talking about hives, our topic, and the first question is, what are hives and how do you know if you have them and are they difficult to diagnose? Hives are not very difficult to diagnose. They're pretty characteristic. Uh, they are raised, red, itchy, circles and sometimes patches um, that can come and go for a few hours but then go away to perfectly normal skin without bruising, scarring, or changes in the pigment of your skin. And that's kind of the easy definition for hives. What's the difference between a short episode of hives and chronic hives? Well, there are two, as you say, there are two classes. There are short or acute urticaria, and urticaria is our $10 word for hives, or then there are chronic urticaria. And the difference between those two is somewhat arbitrary based on the time. And acute urticaria are defined as less than six weeks. Chronic urticaria are more than six weeks. As far as what causes them, you know, they're roughly uh, almost equal as far as the causes between the acute and the chronic. It's just whether or not they last longer than that six weeks. Well, with respect to the short-term hives, mm -hmm. how do you treat them? Antihistamines are usually the best way to treat those. And the same is true with chronic hives, too. Um, a lot of people will try to treat with topical steroids, um, topical creams, other types of creams, or even oral steroids, and those usually don't work nearly as well as antihistamines do. You see people whose necks turn red and blotchy when they get upset and nervous. Mm -hmm. Is that hives? It can be. Usually if those lesions stay very flat, um, that's more an indication that they're just flushing, and that can be a normal thing in some people, but it can be more dramatic in some. Now if they're raised and itchy, they can be hives, and stress by itself doesn't usually cause hives, but if you already have a tendency toward having hives and you get stressed, it brings them out much easier. Is there a way to prevent that phenomenon? Antihistamines, again. Uh, what antihistamines do is they block histamine receptors, and the cause for hives is usually histamine release from the mast cells in your skin. So if you can block those histamine receptors, then you don't have hives, or at least you don't have as many and you don't have them uh, as often. If you have splotchy red welts on your skin, how do you know if it's the hives or something more serious that might require a trip to the emergency room? Okay. Hives can sometimes be the first indication of a systemic allergy response, and those types of reactions will be accompanied by additional symptoms. Those may include swelling in your throat where it's difficult for you to breathe, speak, or swallow, asthma type symptoms where you have coughing, wheezing, shortness of breath, abdominal symptoms of pain, nausea, vomiting, um, and violent diarrhea. Um, but if you just have hives themselves, it's usually just the hives. Now the other thing too is that hives that stay around longer than a few hours aren't necessarily consistent with that first definition of hives, and so that may be something else. But usually that doesn't require a trip to the ER either. Uh, that's usually a trip to your um, primary physician or possibly um, to an allergist. Why do some people have chronic hives? The most common reason for chronic hives is an autoimmune phenomenon. When we say autoimmune, what that basically means is you've made an antibody that you react to yourself. Um, so the most common cause there is that you've had a previous infection and a lot of times we see this in kids where they'll have a cold or a GI bug or even a urinary tract infection. Within a week or so after that infection, they start having hives. What happens there is you initially develop antibodies to the bug that you're infected with. And then those antibodies sometimes can cross-react with the mast cells in your skin. When they attach to the mast cell, the mast cell spews out histamine, and histamine then in turn causes the hives. So that's why most episodes of hives we really can't find a specific trigger for. They just occur and we can usually trace it back to a preceding infection. How do you treat chronic hives? Again, with antihistamines. Um, the well, when best you say way, antihistamines, oral or injected? or Oral antihistamines. Um, usually there are short-acting antihistamines like Benadryl, Atarax. Uh, there are long-acting antihistamines like chlorpheniramine, um, Cetirizine or Zyrtec, Loratadine or Claritin, Fexofenadine or Allegra. We usually try to shoot for the long-acting antihistamines simply because you can take them once or twice a day and they last you that whole period where the short-acting stuff only works about four to six hours. 
The other thing interesting about antihistamines in hives is we typically have to use doses that are higher than the usual recommended daily doses because those recommended daily doses are actually chosen for nasal symptoms rather than for hives. Um, and a lot of times you have to go to even two, three, or four times the usual daily dose to treat hives and get them under good control. Are there any serious long-term effects to having uh, chronic hives? Not really. If you have typical hives, like we described before, you're just having typical hives. Um, and they're usually not associated with anything more serious. On the other hand, if you have vasculitic hives, which typically will cause bruising or scarring or changes in the pigment of your skin when they go away, and they're more often painful rather than just itchy, then that could signal something more serious that needs to be looked into further. But if you just have kind of the typical hives, you've got the hives. Um, the question is, how long will they hang around? And if you end up having the chronic hives, which are longer than six weeks, then those usually resolve you know, within a period of several months to several years. About half the cases will resolve in about six months, about two-thirds within two to three years, about 90% within five years. So some people continue having hives for very long periods of time, but they aren't associated with any you know, deleterious problems. You, I think, kind of answered this question. Will chronic hives, can they go into uh, remission and will they come back? They usually do go into remission. And if you've had hives once, you're more likely to get them again. Um, nobody really knows uh, the kind of percentages on how many people will have recurrent hives. Uh, but usually if you've had at least one episode, you're more prone to get them again down the road, whether that was an acute or a chronic episode. Other than medication, uh, what can people with chronic hives do to um, you know, reduce the likelihood of an episode? Okay. Some forms of hives um, respond or actually are brought out by heat. Um, so if you have that type of hives, you try to avoid um, increases in ambient temperature. Some types of hives are worsened by pressure. So you usually try to wear loose clothing and things like that if you can. Um, most people or some people with hives will have increases in their hives with use of NSAIDs. So things like aspirin, ibuprofen, naproxen, those tend to destabilize mast cell membranes. So we usually advise people to avoid um, those types of medications while they're having the hives. Um, another thing is just hot water. I have a lot of patients who feel like they'll get relief by getting in a hot shower. It actually makes their hives worse because mm -hmm. again, it destabilizes those membranes and makes that the histamine come out even more aggressively and gives them worsened hives. Very well. Doctor, thanks for your time today. Oh, you're welcome.